We haven't talked about Vim for a while, so let's talk about it. More specifically, I want to talk about a plugin that exists for Vim, as well as a bunch of other text editors, Emmet. And it's a really cool tool for web development, which is why I stumbled upon it, because I'm going to be doing some web development. Now, this plugin makes certain things much, much easier, like commenting out blocks of code, because that's a little bit trickier to do with HTML than other languages. So let's scroll down to where the Vim version is past all of these whack text editors. Um, I haven't even heard of some of these, like Edit Plus, that kind of sounds like just a ripoff of Notepad++, and Code Lobster PHP Edition, never heard of it. Sounds like some kind of a Jordan Peterson IDE. But yeah, Vim is obviously the one that we want. So it's going to bring you to this GitHub page. So it's obviously cross-platform. It's gonna work on Linux, Windows, Mac. Now I'm on Linux and I'm using Vim Plug as my plugin manager. So these instructions that I'm going to give you guys for setup are specifically for that type of a setup. But different setups will still be similar enough so you can still follow along. Now what you want to actually do is download the zip file from this link here. You could still clone this GitHub repo, but you're going to get a couple of extra junk files with it, so that's why I suggest downloading it from this link here. And this is going to bring you to vim.org where we can download the cleaner version of the zip file right here. And once you have that downloaded, uh, you can go ahead and bring it up inside of an archive manager or just do it at the command line if you want. Uh, but I'd bring this up just as a little bit easier to show you guys the files that you get in here. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and extract this into your .vim folder and make sure that your plug.vim file doesn't get overwritten since that's what we'll actually use to load our plugin. So I've got a terminal over here that I could just use to show you what I'm talking about. So inside of the .vim folder, you have this other folder called autoload where your plug.vim is supposed to go. So uh, you might not want to copy that whole folder over because it might overwrite it. You might just want to copy those two specifically into the auto load folder. Um, and then once you have all of that done, you can go ahead and start Vim. Let me actually make this bigger. And then you want to use the command plugin install. And you want to make sure to capitalize the P as well as the I. Um, oh, I think actually it's plug install. Yeah, plug install is the right command, my bad. Uh, so then you wanna go ahead and do that. And after you run it, it's going to say um, that you successfully installed it. Mine says that it's already installed because obviously I've already had it installed. So once we have that taken care of, uh, let's take a look at some of the things that Emmet can actually do. And I think I have it on this tab here. All right, so let's go into um, example.html. All right, so let's say that you're starting off making a new page for your website. You're probably going to use a template that looks something like this. Right now, this is a template that people would usually use to uh, go ahead and set up their HTML doc. Now, there's a few different ways that you can go about uh, setting that up. You could type it out manually, and that would be kind of the low IQ move, like that's gonna be really annoying and time consuming. Maybe you'll get the idea to just copy and paste that from some external document into Vim. That's kind of a medium IQ move, but the 200 IQ move after you've installed Emmet Vim is to simply type HTML colon five and then press the uh, key combinations control plus Y plus comma, and then that's going to do this. It's going to, whoop, it's going to automatically generate that uh, HTML for you. And another thing that I really like about this plugin is 
the uh, tag completion. So let's say that you know, you're creating a div tag, right? So the way that you would normally do that is you would type out something like this, div, and then you do another one like that with the forward slash and then div. That's normally how you would go ahead and create a div tag. But with this Emmet Vim plugin, you could simply type div and then again, do your control plus Y plus comma. And then it's going to just automatically expand that div tag for you. Uh, as well as create the closing div tag. And if you notice closely, it's automatically put my cursor right in between the two, which is where you would start entering your text or your link or uh, some other type of thing like that. Now, you might be thinking that at this point, why would anybody want to use this convoluted key combination, right? Like control plus Y plus comma. You know, that's a little bit difficult to use. That might be a little bit difficult to remember. But the thing is, you don't actually have to use those. This is Vim. We can remap any keys or a combination of keys that we want, which is exactly what I did. So if we take a look at my um, VimRC file, the, the dot file, uh, we can look at the Emmet shortcuts that I have defined down here. So. Um, over here, this let uh, g colon user emmet leader key. Uh, the leader key is normally the control plus y. So what this syntax right here is doing is it's basically mapping the keys control plus y to a comma. So now in order for me to actually trigger this, instead of it being control plus y plus comma, it's now comma plus comma which is easy to type, right? I mean, everybody should know where the comma is. Hit that baby twice and then boom, you've got the uh, expansion that Emmett can do. And this up here, um, you can also change what modes that Emmett works in. So this makes it so that Emmett, the Emmett functions are only going to work when you're in normal mode. So that way, if I was like in insert mode, I can type all of these commas and it's not going to cause any type of weirdness, it's just, you know, I can type commas, right? Maybe I want to actually insert multiple commas without accidentally expanding a tag. So that's pretty much the basics of how you can install Emmet, uh, set it up, and then also change your shortcuts to be uh, something that is actually easier than the control Y comma. Of course, make sure that you right quit this and then reopen uh, whichever file you're working with to actually get these new shortcuts to apply. I've already done all that before I started the video. So let's go back to this. And then there's a few other things that I want to show you that you can use Emmet for. So I already showed you um, how you can do the div. So you can just type div, comma, comma, and then that automatically expands the uh, tag for you. You can also do this with nested tags as well. So let's say that um, like you have what is in this example here. So you want to do a div and then a div one, div two, div three. The way that you would go ahead and auto expand those is to just type div and then this greater than sign, div one, greater than sign, div two, greater than sign, div three, so on and so forth for all of the different um, expansions that you want to do and then comma comma and you see this is automatically uh, expanded this into what is this like four deep nested tags real easy I, I mean you could just look at it this would take you probably 10 times longer to type it out manually um, even if you kind of got the idea to like copy and paste and, and do some sort of uh, vim stuff it would still take longer than just using the Emmet plugin um, we can also create list. So there's another thing that you commonly do in HTML is creating a list of items. Maybe you have a list of different links. Um, you could do that as like resources. Say if you have a page that's about some sort of research topic and people want to actually see what your sources are, you might put it inside of a list at the bottom of your page. Um, but what we can do here is we can do div and then, um, my list to go ahead and create an ID for it. And then we can do LI, and then you want to do the star. So this is going to be um, 
star and then the number of list items that you want to create. So if you want to create 10, star 10. And then you want to do inside of these uh, curly brackets, the name that you want to give to your list items. So this one, we're just gonna do a generic name, list item. So we got that and then we'll do comma comma to expand it. And then you see, I have all of these list items. Now, when you're creating a list, you probably don't want all of the list items to have the same name. You probably want them to um, have something different like list one, list two, list three, et cetera. Um, you can also do that automatically with the Emmet plugin. So the way we would go about doing that is um, div hashtag my list and then li star 10. And then we're going to do list item. And then here's where the difference comes in. We put a dollar sign at the end. So what this dollar sign is going to do, um, kind of similar. If you've done a lot of coding, then you probably already know what this is going to do. But this is going to essentially act as a variable um, for whichever list item number that we're in. So now if I expand this, you see it automatically does um, for the first list item, list item one, second one is list item two, three is three, four is four, so on and so forth until we get to list item 10. Really cool stuff. Um, oh, so now if we want to create sibling tags. So uh, if we look at like up here, um, this uh, title tag, this is a child of the head tag. You can tell it's a child because it's inside of the head. So if you're inside of something, you're a child. If you have something inside of you, then you're a parent, just like in real life. Uh, so if we want to create siblings, which are going to be basically people on the same on the same level, right? Like your siblings aren't your parents, at least I hope not. <laughs> then you could do uh, div plus h1 plus h2. So we're gonna make these all siblings. And then you can see they're all on the same line. So that's how you can tell that they're all siblings. Now, there's another cool thing that we can do for creating tags. Um, some tags have much longer names like a block quote or button or header or footer. There's shortcuts built in to this plugin to be able to auto expand those. So if I wanted to auto expand a block quote tag, I don't have to actually type out block quote. Um, you could, and this would go ahead and auto expand it, but that goes against the whole Vim philosophy, right? Like we want to type as few keys as possible. So I could just do BQ and that would do the same thing. Um, for button, I can do BTN and then that would expand it out into button. Um, for header, I could do HDR, and then that would expand it out into header. And then finally for footer, I could just type FTR and then expand that into footer. Good stuff. Uh, then we have the ID expansion. So oftentimes for a tag, you'll want to also give it an ID name. I guess I already kind of showed you this with the list, but you can also just do it uh, with normal tags and IDs. So it would basically be um, tag name and then hashtag ID name, and then go ahead and expand that. And so we have the tag name and then we have ID name equals, there you go, perfect. Um, let's see, so we did ID. Uh, oh yeah, so then class expansion. So we got tag name, tag name dot class name. And then we can go ahead and expand that. And then there you go, we have our tag name and then we have a class for it. Now, another thing too, anytime we're doing um, class expansion or uh, anything with our tag. So Emmet automatically assumes a tag name if it's not given. So if you've done HTML in the past, like writing up a, your own HTML, or if you've ever done like inspect element on a random web page and looked at the HTML, you've probably noticed that the most common tag name is div. So that's what it's going to create for us uh, by default. So you saw how I did um, 
how I did um, tag name dot class name up here. Well, what I could do is just dot class name without specifying the name of the tag. And then if I expand this, you see that Emmett's automatically assuming div is the tag name I wanna use. And then it just goes ahead and fills that in. Um, we can also do the same thing with multi-class expansion. So um, again, we could say like tag name and actually specify it. And then we could do dot class one, dot class two. Make sure that you don't put spaces in these. So it literally is dot and then class two. Um, same thing if you wanna do like dot class three, but just make sure that there's no spaces. And then we can go ahead and expand this into all of the classes. Or if we wanted to uh, have it assume the class name with div, then we could just do that and it's automatically going to create that div tag and then all of our classes inside of it. Um, and we can also combine our ID and our class expansion. So if we want to do hashtag my ID for the ID and then dot my class, and again, the div tag is going to be implied, expand that, and we have both an ID and a class. And at this point, I, I'm sure you guys kind of get the point that this is going to save you so much time when you're writing up HTML. Um, especially if you're going to do your HTML in Vim. That's one of the things um, that Vim is kind of sort of lacking. I mean, it's a little tricky to do HTML in Vim just with its default because so many other editors like Sublime Text will have things built into them to make HTML easier, but we don't have to go to something like that. We can just install a plugin and then continue on with using our beautiful Vim. A uh, couple other things that I'm going to show you guys. Um, so if you want to add any content to your tags, you can just do that with a curly brace. So let's say that I have this tag H1, oh, H1, and then I want to put some text into it. So we'll say, this is my text. We can go ahead and close that with our curly bracket and then expand it. And then it automatically creates our uh, tags with the text formatted inside of it. And we could do that same thing with classes. So if we want to do um, h1.class1, and we want to say this is my text, go ahead and expand that. Oh, <laughs> I did the class as uh, hq instead of h1. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, this is how you can go ahead and expand that as well. Now, there are many, many, many more options that you can use in Emmet to make your HTML and also CSS. There's CSS plugins for this as well, or rather CSS commands that you can use to make that part easier as well. Um, there's a cheat sheet that's available for it. So this is the, um, the URL docs.emmet.io forward slash cheat sheet. Of course, I'll leave this in the description for you guys, but this is such a long page of just different, you know, so many different things that you can do to make your HTML easier. I'm probably gonna be reading through this a bunch myself because like I said, I have some HTML that I have to write up. But anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Hope you found it useful. If you did, be sure to share it with people so that other people can gain some benefit from it as well. Leave a like on the video, subscribe, and be sure to tick that notification bell so that you know when new videos are coming out. Peace out.